This video is sponsored by Warby Parker. More on that in a minute. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite sniffing revolutionary, Gardner. Now, if you have Steam Deck in one hand and Steam Deck news in the other, which would you say is heavier? I guess it depends on the news and on the week. But let me tell you, this week we've got some big news, so let's just get into it. First, the Steam Deck now has 5,000 playable plus titles. Valve's been hard at work yet again testing the entire catalog of games on Steam against the Steam Deck's verified program criteria. So the Steam Deck now has 5,116 verified and playable titles, and that's cause to celebrate. For those unaware, the verified program has four tiers that rank a game's compatibility with the Steam Deck. Ideally, for best compatibility with the deck, a title should have a verified rank. This would mean that the game works without any warning or messages. It also doesn't have unreadable text on screen uh, or other UI issues. It doesn't have input issues. And for Windows games, they have no incompatibility with Proton. And playable games, as the name might suggest, are playable but might have one or more compatibility issues with the Steam Deck, be it input, display, or warning messages. The unsupported rank is not compatible with the deck, and the unknown means that Valve has not uh, actually ranked the game yet. So if you take playable and verified games and combine them, you get 5,116 titles, with 2,164 of them being verified. Those two numbers are not insignificant chunks of the Steam game catalog, and as one Redditor pointed out, it's more titles than the PS5 currently has. Man, all this tech news is making my eyes hurt. I think I'm gonna need a new pair of glasses. Good thing today's video is sponsored by Warby Parker. Warby Parker has made eye care a much easier, more accessible, and less expensive process. They offer eyeglasses, sunglasses, contacts, and even eye exams, and you can do it all in-store or from the comfort of your own home. Their glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. And after my experience of buying glasses for upwards of 300 bucks, that sounds pretty good to me. With Warby Parker's home try-on program, you can order five pairs of glasses for free to try on at your own leisure and with absolutely zero obligation to buy them. They ship for free and include with them a prepaid return shipping label to make returns much less of a hassle. Now, I ordered my five pairs of glasses and I had a great time trying them on at home. What I liked best was that I could really gauge how they fit my face without the pressure of a salesperson looming over my shoulder. And what was even better was that Emily and my sister were right there to provide me with feedback and let's face it, lots of compliments about how they looked. <laughs> It was so easy, and I was really excited to buy my new pairs of glasses from Warby Parker. And you can be too. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com gardener, or use my link in the description and you can try your five pairs for free. Now back to the episode. And thank you to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video. So Warner Brothers has just dropped their official PC system requirements for Hogwarts Legacy, which is a title that Emily and I are stoked for. So the question is, Will it run on the Steam Deck? Well, the title will take up a massive 85 gigabytes of drive space, which when it ships for the Steam Deck would account for nearly 17% of total disk space on the 512 model and more than a third of drive space on the 256 gig model. The game is going to use DirectX 12, so there shouldn't be a problem with Proton DXBK wrapper there. The recommended specs are as follows. Ryzen 5 3600, which the Steam Deck runs a 3750 equivalent, so check there. Uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now the deck actually allocates system RAM to the GPU, so this falls a little short, but I think that shouldn't be much of an issue. And an RX 5700 XT. And because the Steam Deck's using RDNA 2 at 1.9 gigahertz, where the 5700 XT is RDNA 1 at 1.8 gigahertz, I think this is a bit of a toss up. So barring some kind of unnecessary anti-fun DRM scheme being included with Hogwarts Legacy, it should definitely be playable on the Steam Deck, especially considering that the recommended specs are for 1080p 60 gameplay and the deck natively renders at the much more achievable 800p 60 or even 40 uh, if you enable 40 hertz mode. Now, Hogwarts Legacy is scheduled to ship February 10th, 2023, and I'm pretty excited to play it on my deck. I'd like to know what you guys think about the game. Let me know in the comments. All right, next up, let's talk about the next story, which is everybody's favorite GTK video game management tool, Lutris, has just added support for Amazon games. That's pretty nifty, but I don't really think I'll ever need that. 
Uh, as I mentioned in the last deck news video, the latest version of Lutris came with the big news that it's now also available on Flathub. So if you want to check out that with me, make sure you get subscribed. I'll be making a video about Lutris on the deck in short order. Now we're on track to hit 100,000 subscribers, and I know that with your help we can do it. So make sure you smash that subscribe button. You can also like that smash button if that's more your speed, and it helps you stay up to date with all the awesome stuff that we're doing here on the channel. And thanks. Next up, you've heard of Simu, right? It's the proprietary Wii U emulator for PC. Yeah, well, like not anymore. Not that it's going away or anything, it's just not proprietary anymore. It's now completely free and open source, and that's pretty cool. They have actually adopted the Mozilla Public License 2.0, which is not quite as copyleft as something like the GPL, but it's still a fitting license and one that makes sense for their project. But what does that mean for people who just wanna play games with Simu? Well, it's pretty simple. There's now a Linux version, though they do warn that the Linux build is still rough around the edges. This does mean that at least going forward, you should be able to get a native Linux build of Simu for the Steam Deck. And that should offer a not insignificant performance gain. It also means that if you have the know-how, you can contribute to the Simu project with a link down below. Next up, the Steam Deck on the hardware survey. SteamOS Hollow is now the most popular Linux distro on Steam, bar none. That's according to the Steam hardware survey, and it's 3.69, nice, percent more than its closest competitor, Arch Linux. Now, if we look at the Steam hardware survey, we can make an educated guess about how many Steam decks are actually out in the wild by looking at the overall number of hardware survey respondents that have the AMD custom GPU 0504, which is the Steam Deck hardware GPU. So if we take that 0.17% as our starting number, and then we look at the latest number of active monthly users on Steam, which is 120 million, active monthly users being the most likely to have actually uh, responded to the hardware survey, we get just over 2 million. That's just over 2 million Steam Decks in the wild. That's a pretty impressive number. And the fact that Valve's delivering the deck at a breakneck pace and aiming to fulfill all the reservations by the end of the year, that's even more impressive. That's 10% of the number of PS5s that have been sold uh, in total since the PS5's launch. Now, next up, on September 1st, there was a new Steam Deck beta client update and it added a few fixes and features. First, slider controls now allow more precise input for larger ranges and accelerate changing the value the longer left or right is held. They also fixed uh, up and down directions on the gamepad, sometimes skipping rows on the keyboard when connected to an external display. They fixed errors when operating emoji keyboard in Steam and desktop modes. And for Steam input, they added support for shift modes in the new configurator. They added a fix for a case where two controllers could show the same slot in the controller reorder screen. They fixed a case where a controller could not show up in game until the overlay was toggled. They fixed the page up and down glyphs being swapped in virtual menus. And they fixed an issue where switch controllers could show up with a duplicate device. Then on Tuesday, there was a smaller update that fixed a few crashes, including one involving screenshots, one including audio, and one related to Bluetooth. The Steam input controller also added a turn off controller command that can be assigned as a button cord, and this is huge. I have been wanting this for a very long time, so being able to set this up is great. Now in general, these are all awesome to see, but I would love to know if there are things that you want changed, fixed, or even added to your Steam Deck experience. Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a special shout out to Sheldon Halcom, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of folks like Sheldon that I'm able to continue growing this show and making it what it is today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, consider using the links below to pledge your support on Patreon or become a YouTube member. It's all greatly appreciated. But I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to Warby Parker for sponsoring this video and you can use the link to support the show. And as always, I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.